Hey everyone, today we are going to be looking at uh, upgrading the laser cutter that I had built. Um, the issue that I'm having is that just during the period of cutting I am missing some steps. And that can cause a lot of issues, makes me have to run the machine slower so it doesn't happen. Um, you know, waste material. Uh, so I'm thinking what's going to solve this for me is to change out my stepper motors. Uh, I don't have the exact power rating of them or the like how much torque they have, but I know it wasn't all that great. And uh, so, also for instance, like there are five motors that I have in here, and I think I paid fifteen twenty bucks for the lot of them, and I got some upgrades, and these are about fifteen bucks a piece. Now these are supposed to be two amp motors that get I think something like 85 to 90 ounce inches of torque um, whereas I think these are more like 60 or 50 um, but what I'm going to end up having to do to change these out uh, this one is going to be fairly simple there's only a couple uh, screws back here that hold on this motor and the mount uh, so taking that off and getting it off the belt and changing out the motor shouldn't be too bad. These on the other hand are going to be a little bit more tricky because there's a belt that runs over the gear and then down inside this rail. And the belt is terminated right here at the end. And there's a clamp that is screwed in this way to hold the belt. And it's like that on the back as well. So I have to take off this front panel to build it loosen and tighten the belt to get these motors on and off. This one is kind of a rat's nest. I really, really wish I would do something better with this, but um, I've also got the mount for the uh, cable carrier also bolted to that motor mount. So that one's gonna be a bit extra trickier. Here I made a couple examples of what's going on. This top pudding was engraved uh, by, cut, by doing scan lines of the whole name back and forth and this is a really horrible way to do it because you're having your uh, cutter head move over a lot of space and it's not actually doing anything or cutting so uh, I got a video that I'll, I'll crop in somewhere here And then um, the second one, this was made by each letter. Instead of doing the whole word at a time, it did each letter at a time. And this is where the issue comes up. It's much more efficient this way, but when it does this, I oftentimes find myself losing steps or missing steps on the motor. I, th I think it's on the motor, but it'll run the letters together or just not line things up the way it is. Now I got the name a couple more times on here because I was trying to get it to miss steps and it wouldn't, of course. Uh, but uh, over here, I did finally get it to miss some steps. You can see how it ran the O and P together and the QR and the S and T, and then it even itself back out. 
But whenever you're doing a piece like this, and I've got a full piece of wood in here, or something like that, and I'm carving the whole thing, and then it messes up down here at the bottom, you know, I may have just wasted I don't know, a couple hours worth of work and the material. So I'm hoping um, changing these motors out will fix that. I also have to open up this side over here and adjust the motor controllers, which are on the other side of this plate. Um, these motors can handle quite a bit more power than the old ones, so I need to adjust those accordingly. Otherwise, these will be just as useless as these others. So when you go to install a new stepper motor, the first thing you need to do is figure out which wires go to which coils in the motor. I've got a really simplified drawing um, of the inside of a stepper motor. You have the stator that spins this part right here. Then you have two coils. It's just a coil of wire, and that coil of wire has two ends. Uh, two coils for four wires. You've got a four wire output. So all you need to do is take your multimeter and uh, do an impedance check and see which ones are connected. So you'll uh, put your multimeter on just one wire and go through and test until it beeps. Now, you never want to trust the um, coloring on a wire. I've had it to where say it might be connected uh, one coil might be on this wire and this one or it might be on this one and this one or this one and this one you just got to test it pretty much every time this one just so happens to have the coils paired next to each other which is nice that's the logical way I would think it would be but that is not always the case so you want to be sure to test now I'll show you what happens if you get these mixed up um, it's not really that big of a deal and here I am just wiring up the new motor to see if it works before I mount it in that plate. I'll put a piece of tape on it. It goes right, left, and go. I've got the new stepper installed, everything tightened down, um, and here, I know it's a rat, rat's nest, but this middle controller is the one that's going to control that motor. Uh, the back three switches are the ones that control power. They're all currently turned on, which is a half amp. Now. <laughs> Looking at that now, that could have caused issues with that other stepper. Now that I'm thinking about it, but um, come too far to go back now. So what I want to do is I want to turn it up to 1.5. Now these are two amp motors, but I want to take it up to 1.5 first and see on the thermals, um, yeah, you know, what kind of temperature we start getting on that motor. So all I got to do is turn this very last switch off, on, on, off. So let's see how this motor operates just under a half amp as is. Yeah, it seems to get stuck. Doesn't want to move. It moved a little bit. So that motor can't run under a half amp. Let's turn the power up. Okay. Got that last one moved up. So that should be feeding at 1.5 amps now. Now let's see how it runs. I'm gonna get the uh, thermal camera out. I'm gonna let this heat up, get, get toasty at 1.5. All it's gotta do is just sit there. And if it can hold because it's actually got power going through it to hold its position. That's why you can't really pull on it very well. It locks it into position. So there's current going through it right now. Um, just gonna let it sit at 1.5 and then see what temperature it gets to. So I wanted to show you what would happen if you end up hooking up your motor wrong. Right now it's hooked up correctly. If I hit left, it'll go left. And if I hit right, it'll go right. 
So here is the connection for the motor that runs this. What we're going to do is we're going to swap one coil. We're just going to swap the leads. So now when I hit left, now it's going right. If I hit right, now it's going left. So swapping the pins on one of the coils will make it go in opposite directions. Okay, so how about we swap the coils? We'll take this bottom coil and put it up at the top. And then put this bottom coil down at the bottom. Now, what is supposed to happen is that nothing happens, essentially. Nothing's going to really happen. But I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I got the polarity right on that, on that last coil. So we'll give it a shot. Hit left. Yeah. And then right. So swapping the two coils, these two wires or these two wires, swapping the pair makes no difference at all. So what would happen if you accidentally cross the coils. Say you had it on 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 instead of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So let's swap these real quick. Um, we'll swap 1 and 4 just to make it easy. Okay, so now the coils are crisscrossed. The worst way to hook them up. What happens if I try to go left? Oh, pretty much nothing. Go right, pretty much nothing. It just vibrates and buzzes. It might hop left or right, um, but essentially that's pretty much all it's gonna do. So if you find yourself in that position, almost guaranteed you've got the coils crossed on the wiring. So let's move one and four back. Okay, and left and right. So, I mean, it's really not that complicated with only four wires. You just gotta make sure you keep your pairs separate. And if for whatever reason you get it all hooked up and everything is moving backwards, all you gotta do is swap the polarity of one of the pairs and it'll get it going the other direction. Um, if you swap the polarity of both pairs, you kinda can doing you know you're kind of canceling it out so it's going to end up staying going in the same direction so i've let it sit here for a while and i'm going through and measuring the temps i wish this had a video output but it's only got a screenshot um the side one that i haven't changed yet looks like it's getting up to about 28.6 28.7 c and the new one Looks to be getting up to the hottest point is about 24. So that's good. That's good. It's staying nice and cool. And the one in the back is like 33.9. Now in reality, when you touch these, I mean, they are just barely, barely warm. So I'm going to go ahead and crank that thing up to 2 amps and uh, let it sit for a while and see what temp it gets to. Okay, so it's been sitting a little while longer and it doesn't really seem to have gotten much hotter. 24.5, 24.6. So I'm going to leave it at 2 amps and uh, we'll take some more temperature readings after we actually run it and uh, see how hot it gets then. I've now got them installed. I got the three motors. Made sure they're all hooked up right. Got the um, power set to them. And I'm ready to give it a shot and see if we do any better. So um, this top one did the whole scan and that was at about 40 millimeters a second this one was also at 40 millimeters a second and it didn't mess up so I bumped it up to 60 it didn't mess up I bumped it up to 80 for that other pudding up there still didn't mess up and then when I bumped it up to 100 millimeters a second on the alphabet is when it messed up so I'm gonna keep it keep it at 100 millimeters a second try the alphabet again and see how it goes
and there we have it. It ran just fine, no missteps at all.